Hello friends, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic Friday. It is about 180 degrees here in central Alabama. It is, what, October the 4th on a Friday? It's hot. I wanted to take a moment and show you the smorgasbord that we go through every day to feed our animals. Now look at this guys, this is just a selection of what we're going to use today to feed the animals with. We have a selection up here of pellets and seeds and grains and some other things. We use probably about a hundred pounds of dry foods every day just to feed our animals and we will use more apples than this and we have squash and some mustard greens. A five pound bag of frozen mixed vegetables, a five pound bag of frozen mixed tropical fruit, we got blueberry, the ugliest papaya that you ever did see, some strawberries, and I found some rambutan, and we're going to use those today. So, this is what our birds will eat, what our cavy will eat, what some of our other creatures will eat. You know, we give the green stuff to the tortoises and the bearded dragon. I'm going to get chopping, okay? Lots and lots of different animals, and they eat lots and lots of different things. Of course, the goats get pasture and hay and grains. They get some other things as treats every now and then. Um, we have the Patagonian cavies and the guinea pigs and the rabbits, and they get... They get a guinea pig and or a rabbit pellet and they get fresh greens every day and they get other vegetables as we have it available. So this is mustard greens. It is fresh, organic, curly mustard. We got it at the grocery store this morning and I'm just going to chop it all up. I'm going to shred it and we're going to use it for lots of different creatures now we try to grow this in our garden along with kale and collards and swiss chard but it has been so hot and so dry this summer that not even our tomatoes and peppers did much of anything a lot of people would discard these stems i know my granny would when she was cooking mustard greens she would take she would fry bacon and then when it was all done and crispy she'd take the bacon out of the pan and put about this much mustard greens down in that iron skillet with that bacon grease in it and not cook it though she'd turn the eye of the stove off but she'd just let the heat of the bacon grease wilt the mustard greens and then she'd crumble that bacon up on top of it and she would call that a mustard green salad and it would wilt down to just a little pile of greens but my papa loved that with cornbread so we got that all mixed up i'm just going to push it to the side and i'm going to cut up a squash now we've washed these i don't worry too much about the ends you know if we were frying this for ourselves then yeah i would worry about that and i would can you see? I would cut those end pieces off. But for the animals, they don't care. In fact, they like the stem ends. It provides a little bit of texture, I guess. These bigger pieces I'm going to cut up just to make it go a little bit further. And so, just like that. And I'll cut the rest of this up later, but I'm going to cut up an apple also. Now, I know that there's controversy. People say that the seeds have cyanide in them and the cyanide stores in the organs. But you know what? Parrots in the wild, they eat a lot of things that we wouldn't normally think would be very palatable. Most agriculturists that I know don't remove the seeds from the apples. I'll take out the core bit and not give that to the parrot 
sometimes I'll give that to, you know, pop the seeds out, I'll give that to the goat or whatever. But there's that, so let me, I'll start dishing this stuff out, okay? All right, now this, like I said, this is an ugly papaya. That's just what it is. It's been in the refrigerator, so it's kind of, it's got condensation on it because it's cold. Have you ever cut into a papaya? Look how beautiful that is. There's a cavity in there, and it is full of these seeds. Now, the birds absolutely love this. Every bird we have loves this, but this is especially important to us for the lorries and the taraco and the eclectus parrots they really they really need this every day in their diet it does help a lot look at those seeds spilling out just look at that look at that isn't that amazing now these taste peppery if you eat these look at that big beautiful assortment there's just a few apples back in here and a few of the squash i haven't cut up the rest of them yet i went ahead and cut up the papaya but look i want to show you we have the blueberries and the mixed vegetables that tropical fruit it has pineapples and mango and papaya it even has some strawberries in it and peaches i think we just you know we just get that at walmart nothing special but i want to show you this this is a rambutan we did a video on these last year and eric at the more you grow channel he actually sprouted some of the seeds from these these are only available seasonally and they're not real expensive it was so let me show you how you you open one of these you grab it kind of like that and just twist and that gets the skin to peel off and it's like a big giant juicy grape inside there inside the grape is a seed that's a lot like an almond it's let's see if i can pry that apart there's the seed in there isn't that cool the birds go crazy for these and you know what i give them the skins too they love that yeah i just ate that it's delicious so let's try it How is it? Good. Good? Delicious? That feels like a gape, but it's not a gape. It doesn't have a gape flavor. Um, it tastes very good though. Now I'm going to put together a bowl of food for our eclectus parrots. It is just the dry pellet. This is the Missouri bird breeder diet and I'm going to add some soaked seeds and quite a quite a lot of the green leafy stuff. I'm going to give them a couple pieces of apple and quite a bit of the papaya. Now the proportions to this is not really important and I'm going to give them some of the squash. I would rather give them some darker squash. This is just a yellow cook neck summer squash. Acorn squash or pumpkins or, or something like that would probably be better for them. But this is what we have. I'm going to give them a piece of this rambutan. The kids have eaten all of the fruit from inside. But I'm going to give them this skin. Again, it's been washed in the uh, Young Living Thebes Fruit and Vegetable Wash. So it's good and clean for them. I'm going to give them a, a handful of the mixed vegetables that came frozen and a couple pieces of the tropical fruit and it's still still a little bit frozen but that's okay that's not such a big deal and I'm going to give them a couple of blueberries just for just for the sake of it um, eclectus need lots and lots of fiber in their diet and they need lots of beta carotene in their diet I would love to give them some bright red peppers or sweet potatoes right now but i just don't have any every day they get a little bit of a different variety i don't mix up great big batches of what other people call chop 
just because I use so much at a time, I do what I call chunk. It's just a whole lot easier for me. Now the Vasa parrots, they get just about the same thing. They get fewer greens than the Eclectus because they just don't eat as much of it. But they get more of the the mixed vegetables. And again, a couple pieces of apple and a couple pieces of papaya. And maybe a blueberry or two. And we're going to call that done for them. Now this is going to go for our Patagonian cavies for Scooter and his wife. This is a guinea pig pellet. A guinea pig pellet is it's mostly alfalfa and other hay. And it has some grains mixed in with it. But it is uh, supplemented with high levels of vitamin C. Guinea pigs and Patagonian cavies and chinchillas. Things like that. They're... <laughs> Now this is for this is food for something super special that we're just not even going to talk about. This is a high quality cat food. And I'm going to add some mixed vegetables and a couple of blueberries and just for variety just a little bit of that. And we're going to call that done. And now I'm going to mix up a snack for the lorikeets. You've seen the video that I've done before where they get the nectar. This is going to be kind of like an afternoon snack. They've already had nectar this morning. I'm just going to give them a little bit of applesauce. And we have three cages of lorries. We have Big Richard, the big red lorry. And we have a pair of rainbow lorries. And we have the little perfect lorry. Her name's Squirt Blossom. And so that can be for the rainbow lorries. That can be for Richard. And this smaller amount here can be for the little... Uh, what you call it for sport blossom the the perfect sort of key. so she'll get a blueberry he'll get two blueberries they can have two blueberries how about a piece of papaya for each and just since I have it right here we'll give them some green stuff they probably won't eat it but it'll be something that they can have in their cage to play with little pieces of frozen fruit give them a whole slice of uh, uh, what is that peaches and I'm gonna they don't eat seeds, but I'm going to give them a couple of the papaya seeds just because they are kind of soft. It's not seeds like dried corn or dried sunflower. But that's just something to give them, just something to, just a variety for an afternoon snack. They're really going to like that. Now look at this. I've got about 30 more bowls to prepare for all of our bigger birds, the smaller birds that I'll just go through and put some of this food on top of what they already have. I want to thank you for watching. Please be sure that you are subscribed. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. God bless you. Bye-bye.